What's up, sons? It's Blind Rod with Son of a Tech once again. Today we're going to be taking a look at the performance for the Quake Champions beta. And of course, I do need to go ahead and state that this game is in beta and that these results may vary throughout the progression of development. So keep that in mind. But let's hop in and take a look. Quad spawn in 15 seconds. Stay down. Squeak yourself in. Starting things off as always, we're going to talk about the test bench. It's going to be i7 7700K, overclocked to 4.8 GHz, mated to an MSI Gaming M3 Z270 motherboard with 16 GB of DDR4 clocked at 2400 MHz. The game itself is going to be running on a 256 GB M.2 over SATA drive and it's all powered by a Thermaltake 850 watt gold rated power supply. Excuse me. Bronze rated power supply. Now we're working through some other options here as we move on. I believe I have an AX750 that's going to go in there shortly. So yeah, hopefully we'll get that all worked out before we start doing some more kilowatt testing for GPUs. There isn't really much of a benchmark run to speak of for Quake Champions. So what I did was a little bit unconventional, at least for my personal testing. And what we did was just load a game of deathmatch and then benchmarked the entire run and we went ahead and took the results from that and that's really going to be the closest we can get. We did use a couple different maps here and we're going to talk about a little bit more uh, granular performance for each of these cards. But to start things off, let's go ahead and talk about the results for both the RX 480 8GB and the GTX 1060 6GB as they stand today during this beta. So starting off, we have the GTX 1060 Super Super Clocked, six gigabyte, which had a minimum FPS of 99 with an average of 118.9 and a max of 142. All of these tests are at 1080p with the max available settings. The RX 488 gigabyte from MSI, which is the Gaming X trim had a minimum of 92 FPS with an average of 114.22 and a max of 148. But that doesn't really tell the whole story here. And if we go ahead and hop into a side-by-side -side comparison, as some of you have requested in the past, we are doing that for this particular test because I only had time to test really two GPUs. And if we pop in here, you'll notice something super interesting right off the bat that I wanted to point out. The amount of system memory, this is the RAM here is not uh, VRAM for the graphics card, it's actually system memory, on the GTX 1060 is closer to 10 gigabytes, while on the RX 480 is hovering more around that 6 or 7 gigabytes. I found it super intriguing that this was the case, and I'm not sure exactly why, and further testing, of course, will be done to decide what is happening here. Of course, that could affect the in-game FPS performance here. And another explanation might be that Quake is really loading up all of the VRAM on these cards. Now, I wasn't keen enough to get onto this until way afterwards because I just did some preliminary testing while the beta was still under NDA. So while I am releasing this video, just after NDA, I'm going to have to go ahead and retest, of course, this weekend and throughout the rest of the fully open beta to maybe get some further analysis on why this is actually happening. The second neat thing that you'll notice is that the GPU usage on the GTX 1060 is actually wavering quite a bit more than it is on the RX 480. Where the RX 480 seems to stay maxed out right about that 100% usage, the GTX 1060 is dipping below 100% usage quite a lot. And I think that that means that there is some power left over on the NVIDIA side and for the GTX 1066 gigabyte that could be tapped into possibly as development progresses. 
Of course, a lot of this has to do with different maps, different textures being used, and of course, gameplay scenario. In some situations, I just can't really give you a full view into exactly why the GTX 1060 6 gigabyte is winning right now, especially since the numbers are so close, it's probably within what I would say is margin of error, especially this early in the development cycle. So my conclusion here would be, whether you're on the red team or the green team, for a closed beta status and moving into open beta and not quite ready for full release, I would say that both cards from both AMD and NVIDIA are performing right on par with each other and happy gaming on both sides, red and green. Until next time, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe down below, and I'll see you next Tuesday.